What is up, guys? And of course, welcome back to, of course, another Pokemon Wi Fi Valley in the MMBA, of course. And we're going against Jacob or Jabro and the Tauros Chargers. And yeah, his team looks really, really tough for me in general. Uh, should we know that we see most of the things that kind of predicted? Uh, kind of missing out on a few Pokemon that he does have, of course, in his disposal. We do see that all his OU Pokemon, but of course, Charizard X, Ladders T, Clefable. Uh, but then we don't see neither Empoleon, Biancha, or Porygon 2, which were pretty strong uh, Pokemon for uh, the team against me, actually. And then, of course, the Scavalier Sableye didn't make it for, of course, a fully team of Tauros, Weezing, and Electivire. So, from his team here, we have. A lot of things that make sense and then free Pokemon that kind of make sense. What I mean by that is that Weezing is one of the stronger Pokemon that he could be carrying against me. Mainly for Cortana. So somewhere down the line, the team he brings makes sense. But definitely was surprised not to see Empoleon. Uh, or at the very least, Mianxiao. Who could do very, very well against me. And consider, of course, my team. That it could be very likely I could actually be knocked out with only type of Phoenix as possible. Switching as best. So as you guys can see, I've switched around my team quite a lot. Uh, I actually dropped Swellow and my Entei for Mega Houndoom and Stealthland A. Eh? So yeah, that's actually pretty darn cool. Uh, my general idea here was that both Houndoom and Cortana and Tabafini does pressure his team overall really well. Tabafini and in the defensive role does really well of just not getting easily knocked out. Being of course the Landers makes sense. Charizard X is close to walled against the Tabafini. Um, without, of course, acknowledging, of course, Thunder Punch. Uh, so, those to make sense. And then, of course, Cortana does really well overall against the team, besides Weezing, therefore, Weezing makes sense for this match. A very, very good response overall. Uh, Jolteon, due to speed here, outspeeds everything on his, speed, on his beam team, and uh, should do fairly well. Gigalith, uh, especially offensively well rounded here, definitely against Clefable, and, of course, possibly Charizard X. Uh, well, of course, this time around, actually, Soft Sand, together with, of course, Stone Edge, uh, Earthquake, Super Power, uh, which actually makes no sense in this matchup, when probably was a bit of weird, actually, thinking about it. Then, of course, Stealth Rock, which does fairly well to his team, though, and not necessarily the things he brought, besides, of course, the Charizard. Uh, and then, of course, Southland, um, Bandit variant. Uh, I was fearing Sableye for this matchup, and not seeing it was really, really, really appreciated, because that means the Southland can possibly just spam returns back and forth and of course with ban in mind there really are nothing that comes in on it freely without of course taking heavy amount of damage so my general idea here was to start off with houndoom uh hoping that it leads up with something i can actually hurt super effectively i do not want to get Charizard x in an easy environment where he can set up uh which means that uh, houndoom makes sense here in that fashion that it's going to be able to do heavy amount of damage <laughs> And it could be possibly his lead since Giggle seems so obvious for me and of course on my side. So yeah, anyway, with of course all this said, let's of course go into the match. So from the start here, I kind of get the first prediction kind of wrong. Uh, because while well, I decided he leads of course to Houndoom, he's going to start off with Landris. It does make sense, it, it really, really does. And I'm not going to try to scout for a possible... Uh, Scarf variant, so he's gonna get his Stealth Frogs up if he's dead, so was his Sire, I'm gonna switch out, I'm gonna go to Rexy directly, and um, basically try to soak a hit. Um, I do not have default in this variant, so it's unfortunate for this matchup, but it actually goes for U-Turn, which kinda tells me that it's very likely to Scarf variant, so I'm gonna have that in mind, as we're gonna see Shocker being, of course, the Electivire coming in, and Electivire, kinda tough, kinda tough to deal with. Uh, I'm definitely going to predict this variant to be either going for a Volt Switch against a Piloting or hopefully go for Thunder Punch. You're going to send a that you can easily take both and possibly an Earthquake that follows. As uh, we're going to get the Sans Room up, which is awesome, great to get in start out. As we see Psychic, and we see that this one is specially offensive, which means that I don't necessarily need to scout for Earthquake. And if it has it, it's not going to do a lot, if anything. As he's going to switch him back his Landorus, and I'm going to get my free rocks up. Um, this was a very, very good opportunity for me to get that up, mainly because he doesn't have a Defog or Spinner for this matchup, which means that they are here to stay. And Landorus, yeah, tough, which means that we're going to send in Stealth, and can definitely take an up, but I shouldn't need to worry about that, and definitely can, of course, force him out with Return. But he does go for a knockoff, of course, and knocking off my Choice Band, and that's bad. 
That is a lot of power lost on Fulf, and that's not gonna be good, as he's gonna definitely do the easy switching, which is of course wheezing, and we gonna see now how pitiful Stoutle it is without the band, and it's kinda pitiful. Now, here's the thing, we do get like around 50% of damage onto the horse, so wheezing would of course receive little damage in mind, but I am not here to try to take the burn, there is no way in hell, and of course I do not want to send Infini for a possible um, sludge bombs. So I'm easily gonna go with, of course, my Hound Doom, predicting the sludge bomb. It's, it's gonna, of course, land on me. It's gonna be resistant. It's not gonna do a lot, but we do get poisoned, and poison is definitely unfortunate uh, because we all get the residual damage from the sandstorms. So we basically are free falling here, and we don't even be evolved yet. It should be said though, a Dark Pulse does pack a nasty punch on his team, and if Clefable could be a switching. We do have sludge bomb to cover that, so we're just gonna go directly for the Dark Pulse. There's no reason for me not to. Uh, mainly because if I set up a nasty blood, it won't matter since we course already know that Landris is of course scoffed. So with that in mind, we're gonna go to Dark Pulse and we're gonna actually just kill the Weezing. So that's that's good. That's a Fini and Cortana switching that is completely gone. And we should be able to maneuver a bit better against the scene, but of course that's it. Startling without the band, it's kinda kinda bad. Kinda kinda hard to use now. So Electivar comes back in and um, I don't necessarily have any good switching. While I do want to preserve, I say, like, kind of feel that, you know, Jolteon might be the only thing here in case you want to go for a Volt Switch. As we see Hidden Power, and not only that, we see Hidden Power Ground. And that's not good. That's definitely something that Dose is not predicting. And it does do a heavy amount of damage. Uh, luckily, though, my Van Height or Jolteon is um, somewhat defensively this battle, since, of course, I don't need to have a massive speed. As he's going to switch out Harley here, and I'm actually going to switch myself going back to actually full and um, the main reason for that is because I kind of figured that he was something else um, I basically feel that he is possibly scarfed at worst um, and we're gonna send a Vulcan back again for predicting of course the moon blast uh, because I don't want to get myself in uh, you know trying to kill him now it does go for thunder wave uh, and he does miss it which is unfortunate but in, it is against a Pokemon he will have speed no matter what uh, so we're just gonna go for a safe stone edge here and uh, Landers comes in, it does get intimidation as I felt, alright, I might not even do that much damage if I connect this hit. And uh, that's a lie, a freaking 2 hit kills it without a problem. <laughs> Damn, Gale is so underrated. Uh, so I'm gonna send him a Sazel again, basically sacking. At this point, there's no reason for me trying to reserve it. I need a better pilot into this, and Stavlin might be just that. As he's gonna U-turn on me, so we're gonna get the free switch against some kind of matchup. He's gonna bring in Shocker. Um, it does get residual damage onto it, and I felt it, it, I might as well just go for as heavy possible damage as I can. And that is definitely Lee Stavlin. As, as I said here, it's very likely that he was uh, a Ska or a Scoff variant. As we go directly for return, we do KO even without a band. That's important, that's really important. As it brings Piss Break being the Tauros. And you know, I can go for Super Power here. I don't know if I KO, I'm, I'm basically gambling it as the superpower of course will connect and we KO the Taurus too, so hey, Stoutland is clearly, clearly too powerful and <laughs> we got KO Taurus out of nowhere. And of course every gem buff Lerner comes in and he has such a low amount of of course HP and I am at minus two here, Return might not be able to cut it, uh, but I have no reason not to do it, it's, it's not like he can do anything to recover. So we go for Return and surprisingly enough it's a KO, so Lando dies too. Which means his two last Pokemon is the Charizard and, of course, the Clefable. If Clefable not a threat, uh, Charizard shouldn't be a threat. Uh, as I go for, of course, a return here yet again, I kinda, kinda got a, a bit, um, a bit arrogant here because I really thought the return should do a good amount of damage, even if minus two. It is, it is not. It's not gonna do that. He's gonna go directly for return. Here's where I kind of realized. Damn, he could very well just set up on me. If he's plus two, he's faster than Southland, and, and, and that will never work. So, with that in mind, I kind of need to find a new footing, and that means bringing a Rexy, of course, with Tapafini. Uh, I'm not going to be able to do a massive amount of damage towards this Pokemon. I should be able to do it KO with Moonblast, uh, if it isn't some kind of defensive variant. But the reason I wanted to miss it right now is because if he's dual stabbed and Flare Blitz, should be, of course, his only way of attacking me. And uh, if he has Thunder Punch, then he won't be able to do anything against Gigalith. So we see, of course, Roost kind of um, just confirming that, of course, 
uh, or already confirmed dragon has good roost so he has to be flare blitz and something else i go for the moon blast as i said their fawn was two at ko it is not uh, which means he's a more specially defensive variant but it also means that i don't necessarily need to fear too much about the damage i put at least not too much as gonna sit in vulcan turn at it predicting of course either dragon dance or of course um a roost in mind because dragon dance that's all right uh, we have yet to see Earthquake or anything like that. If it has Earthquake, that's actually also a good thing. Uh, because that means that his damage output is kind of low. As we see Dragon Claw, and it's of course reduced in, of course, the... I say of course a lot there, don't I? Uh, <laughs> in the Misted range. We got, of course... Hey, I said it again. Um, no, I should take that fairly well. And we're going to crit it in return with, of course, Stone Age. Probably still killing it, considering, of course, that Earthquake might very well Kato too. Uh, then again, you know, as said, it had had Earthquake, things might have turned a bit differently here. Uh, now I go directly for a Stone Age here, and the Moonlight can do very, very much. And uh, I kind of kind of feel that I should definitely have a Heavy Slam here, and just wrap the game. I can't do that, and now I'm just going to go for um, basically um, as good of a point as possible, basically what do you call it, Differential, and switch in my, of course, Kurtana as it goes directly for a Moonlight yet again. And it still does a lot of damage, considering, of course, that Kurtana special defense is kind of bad, and of course, the crits, but it still would possibly be a 2 hit KO. We're just going to wrap the game up with a small strike, and that will be a 5 0 victory in my favor. Though, as stated, as you guys saw, this could have turned very ugly had, of course, that Charizard X been a different set. We basically just was lucky here. So, yeah, that's the wrap. Um, all I can say here, and I'm going to be completely honest, that's Jacob or Jabro. Um, I think my offensive plays really worked really well here. I don't think he had an optimal team towards me, uh, but at the same time, I think he did some nice work here with two Scarfers and definitely was pressuring my team. Uh, Stoutland just basically was fast enough to kind of outpredict him, and even with, of course, losing the choice man, the damage output was still fairly high and you know, eventually did break through here. Um, so, yeah, even if it's a 5 0, as stated here, the Charizard could very well have been Earthquake or Thunder Punch variant. Uh, pressure me quite a lot. He definitely need, was forced to go for a lot of, of course, dragon dances. And at the same time, uh, I could very well go for Surf over, of course, uh, Moonblast. I didn't do that and not necessarily know why. Didn't think of it at the time, but I still wouldn't be able to do it KO it from that uh, damage area. So, with that said, uh, Jacob and a Taurus Charger, thank you so much for, of course, this battle. Uh, needed a win. I definitely needed that. That's my worst mistake ever battle uh, in previous week there. So, I'm, I'm feeling glad. I'm feeling kind of hot right now. Um, we were definitely going to try to win every game from here on out. So yeah, with that said, of course, guys, thank you, of course, for watching, and thank you, of course, Sam, I can't speak today, for watching. I'll see you, of course, in the next video. Until then, of course, take care.